So I've used the word magnitude several times. Now remember, the magnitude of a vector corresponds to the length of that vector if we were to draw it out. Here, vector A has a particular magnitude of quantity A. Now, one bit about notation. So as we work through these problems, you're going to see that I follow a particular convention for notation. Vectors will always have an arrow on top of them if I write it out. In printed text like this PowerPoint, a vector will could be in bold face or it could have an arrow on top. When I write it out, though, it'll always have an error on top that will always correspond to a vector. When I write a variable, when I write it, variables correspond to magnitudes when they're associated with a vector. So if I write just the variable A, variable A corresponds to the magnitude of vector A. Now, variable A, we represent magnitudes explicitly by putting the vector in absolute values. Because a vector, you guys know that an absolute value, a number that is... You all know that the absolute value of a quantity always is a positive quantity. Since magnitudes represent amounts, or graphically, since they represent lengths, magnitudes are always positive quantities. So this is why we have absolute values around this vector to signify we're calling it, we're saying that it is a magnitude. Now, when I write a variable, my variables are always going to correspond to magnitudes when they're associated with vectors. So for me, to insert the absolute value around it with the vector symbol on top is redundant. I'll do that when I want to be very specific, when I want to avoid ambiguity. But most of the time, you'll see me write whenever I write a variable, and if that variable corresponds to a particular vector, then that B will correspond to the magnitude of that particular vector. So with that said, let's talk about how to calculate the magnitude of a vector. Let's look at vector A. So we will make vector A a position vector by putting it at the origin of this rectangular coordinate system. Let's look at the legs of the right triangle that vector A forms with the coordinate axes. Remember, the leg of vector A that is parallel to the x-axis is called the x-component. We will say this is in the amount of A1. And the leg that corresponds to the y-axis the y we call the y-component. In this we'll say is A2. And if we had our protractor out, we'd be able to measure the angle as a positive angle counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Now, can you think of a way of calculating the length of vector A from this information I've given? Oh, I think I heard someone say, use the Pythagorean theorem. And you're absolutely right. This is a right triangle. We know that the hypotenuse of a right triangle is related to the legs of that triangle. So if this right triangle has legs of A1 and A2 in length, and if it has a hypotenuse of length A, we know that this right triangle is related by Pythagorean's theorem. So we know that the square of the hypotenuse 
is equal to the sum of the squares of the components or of the legs of that triangle. So by using Pythagorean's theorem, we can calculate the length of the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Now, our right triangle for vectors, or our hypotenuse, corresponds to the magnitude of that vector. So this formula right here is how we could find the magnitude of a vector in a plane. Let's look at two points in space. We will say point P1 is at coordinates x1, y1, and we will say point P2 is at coordinate x2, y2. Let's suppose that vector A is the vector that connects points P1 and P2. Now, we could write a unit vector, or rather, we could represent vector A as a position vector. And in fact, whenever you go between two points and connect them with the vector, the result is a position vector. The result is a vector that begins at the origin and ends at, at some coordinate. And how you could determine that is by looking at the components of that vector. So if we look at vector A, notice how we have an x component. Now here, I will just call this, this right here, I will call this x1, and we will call this x2. And now let's look at the y-axis. So along the y-axis, we will call y1 here, and y2 is up here. So this length right here is just x2 minus x1. And this length right here is just y2 minus y1. So the piece that is parallel to the x-axis, that piece has a length of x2 minus x1. We can call that a1, if you will. We could say that a1 is x2 minus x1. And a2 is a vector, a one-dimensional vector, given by y2 minus y1. Now what I have here are just the components, or the scalar part, of the x component and the y component. We could combine these using our bracket notation. Remember, our bracket notation says we have two components. And in this situation, those two components end up being the difference between the corresponding x and y components from the coordinates of those two points. Now the interesting thing is, those two components are the same components of the position vector that represents the points uh, that represents the vector between the points p1 and p2. So let's illustrate the position vector from these values. So let's take the two components that we just drew. Let's take the a1 component and let's look at the a2 component as well. So I'm going to just copy and paste these components. 
So I'm going to take the A1 component, copy it, paste it, I'm going to put it on the x-axis, and you could see I didn't do my x-axis quite horizontal. Then I'll take the A2 component, copy it, paste it, and move it right here. And now I have two legs of a right triangle. Guess what? If I copy and paste the hypotenuse of this right triangle or the actual vector A, let's do that. When I copy and paste it, notice how that vector A is the same vector as if it was positioned at the origin. So whenever you construct a vector by connecting them between two points, that vector is equivalent to a position vector starting right at the origin in space. Let's do an example. Given the points A at coordinates 3 and 4 and B at coordinates 1, 3, find the vector AB, then sketch vector AB in the position vector that is equal to vector AB. So spend a couple of minutes trying to do this problem, pause the video when you're doing it, and once you do the problem, you can link to another video in which I do the solution for this particular problem.